You may attempt to defend yourself. Submit or die. Choice is your right. Fear will not save you. Tomorrow is no longer your concern. Mercy is still in a chaotic mind. A darkness lurks within me. Hey guys, welcome to a new guide video. Today I'll show you guys how to play Master Yi. Ability sequence is Q max followed by E for the damaging abilities that helps you when clearing out jungle camps and during skirmishes. And then we max out W last for the damage reduction and sustain. Master Yi's ultimate Highlander gives him a lot of combat stats so always put points into this ability whenever possible. Okay guys, so when starting out with Master Yi, we want to start with the Q here. Um, it's gonna help us a lot when clearing out the jungle camp so what we have to do is that we auto attack the monster and then we use Q to block out the first auto attack, okay? Then just keep kiting the monster camp towards the next camp here. Every fourth auto attack guys will be a double auto attack. So we're gonna take E level 2 here so that is the true damage bonus on our auto attacks while it is active. Of course we want to smite the big one because it deals the most damage. Wait using Q until it dies so you can hit as many as possible, there we go. Remember that if your Q and your E is up guys, then you want to make sure that you use that Q first. Because you will only be able to use your E once per camp because of its high cooldown. And it adds additional damage to your auto attacks that will be true damage. So now we can use E here, we're gonna damage the small ones a bit first so our Q can take it out afterwards. Now I can focus the big one. And remember that your auto attacks will reduce the cooldown of your Q guys, so that's why you can use that multiple times uh, during a jungle camp clear. We don't need to put points into a W just yet, because we still have one stack on our refillable potion and we are pretty healthy, so... This should be pretty easy to do. Putting another point in our Q makes it uh, easier to clear out the camps, so you can do that faster. Right, we're just gonna do a full clear guys. We want to get our items as fast as possible, right? So, take the blue buff here. If possible, you want to use that Q to block out an auto attack. I'm gonna cut it towards the grump here, so you can do it faster. Go. Right, so now we can take out W, so meditate guys, while this is channeling then you will take reduced damage. It also works as your sustain and it is going to extend the duration of your E and your ultimate so it basically pauses the duration while your W is active. Yeah, that's a pretty free kill right there. That's nice, so we can snowball. We're gonna take the scuttle here and then we can look for a gang top if Akali stays. Now the build I'm using here guys, that is a one shot build, that is a burst build. It is really fun to use, really good right now as well, but it is something you only want to use if you are playing against squishy champions. The build meant for one shotting, so it's not good into tanks and bruisers, so... If they have two or more tanks or bruisers, then you want to go for the conqueror build with the uh, kraken slayer. But otherwise this build is really good and really fun to use as well because you will be rushing Dustblade first. 
It's really fun because every single time you get a takedown, you will go invisible. And because of your ultimate, every takedown will also reduce the cooldown of your basic ability, so you can constantly go invisible, spam your abilities, then go invisible again. So I bought a control ward here. Oh, he took my uh, trucks. Okay. I bought a control ward here because Masti is really good at doing the Drakes early. He can do those really easily because of his W, his true damage and so on. So this control ward can help clear out the vision. Because if they don't have vision at the Drake pit, then I can take it out. So let's go and see if it is warded. If it's not, then I'll take it. I'll look for a gank first mid if it's possible. Okay, she's walking bad. This might actually be warded. Alright, it's not warded. They're gonna auto attack it once and then use Q to block out, uh, block out the knockback. We probably won't even need our W here, guys. We're gonna take it out really easily. And this is something you definitely should look for on Masti. He's really good at taking down objectives early on in the game. So if there's nobody to contest it, then make sure you do that. You can invade here and see what camps are up. Oh, there he is. He's already level 6 though because he was power farming. Bodlane needs to watch out. He is level 6 so we don't want to contest that just yet. Oh, they might actually die here. Oh, they did not respect that one. Wants to fight, okay. Oh, he has Predator, okay. I'm not even sure if we can get a kill here. It's very greedy, actually. Alright, I'm going in. I'm gonna go on Thresh here. Gonna queue him. Nice, we dodged his knockback. There we go. I should be able to make it out. I'm not gonna risk going for that double kill right here, because I have 3 kills, so I have a gold bounty on me, and I do not want to give that away, so we're just gonna focus on farming, hit all those 6 guys. Gonna focus on power farming, we want our core items, we want that dust play guys, we also want the uh, berserkers, the attack speed items. Yep, that is what Karina does, just the AFK rooms. Alright, so now we have our level 6, so now we have a lot of good chase and disengage potential. So of course we get a lot of movement speed, a lot of bonus attack speed. Whenever we get a takedown, because of this ultimate passive, then it will reduce the cooldown of our um, basic abilities. And of course, takedowns will also extend the duration of the ultimate, so it's very good in fights where you can pick up one or two kills, because then you can snowball and really clean up. That's what Masti is really good at. He's really good at cleaning up fights. And another really important thing it does guys is that you are resistant to slow, so you cannot be told whether it is movement speed slows or attack speed slows, that does not work on you, so that's another really huge thing uh, from this ultimate here. Because it makes it that much harder for people to kite you while that ultimate is up. I'm gonna smite this one so Hecarim doesn't steal. Now we do have the blue smite here guys, and that is because we are using burst build, right? So this build is not about uh, extended fights, it's about catching up to people and then we just one shot them pretty much. So we want that movement speed on that blue smite, 
But if you're going for Conqueror Yi with the Kraken Slayer, which is a build meant for the extended fights, then you can go for Red Smite. Because Red Smite is a um, smite item that um, makes you really good in extended fights, but it doesn't do anything in the short fights. That's another obvious gang coming in, but I'm pretty sure Karina's roaming. Maybe Hegrim is coming as well here. Oh, Hegrim there. Okay. Oh wow, that's a four-man bot. They're not really reacting to the pink so because they could have survived both. Okay. Oh, nice. They got Karina. That's fine. That's not too bad though, even though there's a killing spree. I'm gonna punish this gank by going Herald, guys. That's what you want to do. If you see the enemy jungle on the opposite side, then you want to take something on the other side. Preferably the objective. So I already took the Drake, right? So now we're gonna go for the Herald. Make sure to hit the eye whenever it pops out because that's going to deal a lot of bonus damage. We can, because it is before 40 minutes in the game, then we can take the tower plates as well with the Herald. So I can look for a Herald topside potentially and then Snowball Victor. Right, let's go top and see. So if you want to gang a Kali, we want to make sure that you use the W first. Gonna wait a little bit here. We just push her out here. Okay, she used it now. That's fine. Oh, well, we can actually dive her. Here's the health here. If she stays, then we can dive her. The Grim is also here. That's fine though. The arena might also come. I'm gonna use Q there to block out that spell. So we don't get knocked back. Nice, we can also go for a Kali. Why I have Oracle Lens, guys. This is really good against Akali. And it's also good on junglers in general because you will be able to clear out the ward so you know where you can gank pretty much. Alright, so we got the first tower. So we are playing for the objectives, which is what we should be doing when we play a jungle role. Objectives are really important. We want to snowball that early game. And the drag is up, so we want to reset here. So we have the dust plate, right? So we're going to be invisible on every takedown. It's a burst master E build that you want to use into squishy teams, of course. You don't want to use it into tank comms or bruiser comms because it doesn't really do a lot. And the second core item, the collector guy, so it also gives crit, which is really nice to have. And it has that execution passive as well, but overall it has a lot of damage. Yeah, we have Victor with us and Akali is topside so we might be able to contest this Drake here. I am super fit as well. I'm sitting on 6 kills and I have my mythic item already so we can go for this. I'm gonna focus the objective over the kills. I'll we'll take down the Drake first and then we can go for the kills afterwards. My nice. second Drake is down. We also got the Herald so it's going really well for us. And we got the scuttle, great. We can just go back to farming here so we can uh, really scale up. Not really anywhere for us to gank right now. We don't really see people in the mid and bottom side. Akali is pushing top. Victor is going top, so that's fine. Oh, they're getting ganked bottom side. I might be able to move here. Let's see. I think they should be fine though. Because they have full HP pretty much. Yep. Checking it out. Nice, they got thresh, right? Okay, great. We can go for Karina here. I know she's uh, camping in that brush, so we can just go in. We have a lot of damage because of that dust blade. Isn't it 
Okay, I'm not gonna clear out that wave right there. He wants it. We have to respect that. So we can go towards the top side and then clear out his camps here. Oh, his red buff is up as well. That's really nice, sir. We can take out these camps here and then maybe look for a gang top. Hence, if Akali has a ward here, but we can check because we have the Oracle Lens. Okay. Probably won't be able to gank here because I'm um, already under the tower, so we have to wait a bit here. Ace is engaging, so. It might actually make it out. Yeah, looks like it. At least she lost the ultimate, so all her kill potentially gone. That means that Victor is safe. Until it is back up again, so. Keep farming, level 11, so now we put another point into ultimate. Get increased attack speed and increased bonus movement speed. That is really important when you want to chase people. Do well in fights, of course. Oh, that's not good. Out of all the champions who can give the kills, they're giving it to Katarina, the worst one, because she snowballs so hard. She's also going for the Kraken Slayer, it's really OP on Katarina. The true damage. It's really smart to go the AD build against Galio, because Galio only counters um, Magic damage, right? So if you build armor against him, he can't really do anything because his W is useless against that. Okay, we can go for a kill here. So I do have ultimate. I also have the blue smite, so I can smite him to slow him down. All right, let's go in with the ults. Nice. Sometimes you want to save that Q in order to get that... Um, Last secured auto attack on them. That's what you want to do if you know they have some kind of movement abilities. Or summoner spells like Flash for example. Then you want to save that Q until they used it and then you can follow them. Now we got the collector. Another big power spike guys. Gives a lot of damage. Also has that execution passive and you also get crit from it. We are building a kind of lethality crit hybrid build here. It is one of the best builds you can use on Musty right now. It is the best build if you are against a squishy comp. But you have so much damage, so much burst damage as well. And then you have that invisibility to help you escape or reposition after every single time you get a kill. Ooh, that's really close. The second, third drag is morning soon. Maybe we can go for Hecarim here. If you can get him, then that drag is really free. Nice. Go. Now guys, remember that your W also will reset your auto attack, but that's something you really want to do unless you are 100% sure that you can secure that kill and then get out safely. Most of the time though, you want to use it to block out their burst damage. Whatever they have, for example, like Kali or Karina's ultimate. Gonna go for the Drake here. It doesn't look like we are going to pick up kills in the mid lane. Um, Akali backed off, so. Focus the objective, and then we can secure the um, goal after this one. Nice. We're gonna take away his jungle camps here, so we set Hacker in behind while snowballing ourselves. Then we focus down the towers here, so we're gonna take the bottom one. This is pretty much how you snowball the game, um, what you have to do on Master E. As long as you focus the objectives, then you should be good to go. Okay, we can go for the kill here. Invisibility, guys. We can kill Akali as well. Use that Q to dodge your ultimate. And now we are invisible, so... You see that burst we did right there? That is why this build is so good. 
The thing is, when you engage in fights, then everyone will be focusing, right? Because you are Masi. They know that you have so much damage, so that's why this invisibility passive helps a, lo a lot. Because it buys you time for the rest of your abilities to come off cooldown. You can pretty much go permanently invisible and then spam your Q and then go invisible and really repeat that once everyone is dead. You have so much burst damage and it's very hard to counterplay that because they won't really be able to target you. Now we're gonna go for the Navori quick blades here guys because that will also help reduce the cooldown of for our abilities whenever we crit right so that's why we want crit in our build so we can make use of this item once we finish this item and we have enough crit then our abilities will have pretty much no cooldown in fights so we're just gonna keep spamming q and keep going invisible so nobody will be able to target us okay karina's going down nice all right let's go here this looks really free so, gonna focus Kaiser first. Invisible, they cannot see me. There we go, and then I can Q again. See, they don't know where I'm going, guys. That's why this build is so good. They have no idea where I'm going because of the invisibility and the burst as well, so just dying one by one. We can go for the Baron here. Baron is dead on that team. Masti can also do Baron really fast. Uh, he has true damage on his C guys and he has that double auto attack on his passive so he's going to do this quite easily. He can do them even faster though if you're using the on hit build of course. Because you have a lot of attack speed and instant rage weight. But this build has the most burst. This is the best build if you want, if you're playing against a squishy team. Like, it doesn't matter if they have one tank, you can still go for this build, but if they have two or more tanks, then you want to go for the uh, on her build, because the build, this build doesn't really do anything against tanks. You're going to struggle a lot. Need to move down here. They're getting caught again. There's nothing up for them to take though, so it doesn't really matter too much that they died. We can look to hit that level 16. Yeah, far ahead of everyone else, so now we have the Namori quick place here, guys. So, as I said earlier, it's going to reduce the cooldown of our abilities whenever we crit, so that's why we also want to crit items. We already have the collector, we have the Namori quick place here, then we can go for the Phantom Dancer for more crit, and it also gives us a lot of attack speed. Let's move towards the last dragon here, so that's going to be the soul. And it is the infernal soul guys, that is what's perfect on burst champions, cause you get a lot more damage, so... A lot more burst damage to your combos. That's right now, we're just going to one shot everyone who walks up. We're gonna clear out the vision here, and then we can secure the drake. Up. They should be coming to contest, but they can't really do anything, so they probably just have to back off because they are 100% going to lose the fight. Yes, I have the Galio ult with me, right? So I can dive straight into the middle of their team and then we can have Galio ult them. We can go for the fight here. I'm gonna engage on Thresh. I waited for him to use that E before I use my Q. Keep going in here. They're just straight up one-shotting people. This is why this build is so OP. It is ridiculous. Alright, let's go for that pencil kill. Come on, Hecarim, where you at, bro? Oh, what? He has ghost as well? Are you serious? Nah, he's not making it out. We are too fast. And we have flash up soon. Now flash here. Let's see, do we need it? No. Yeah, we do need it. There we go, and that is the Penza Killer. This is the most fun Master Yi build I have used for a long time. 
It really reminds of that old AP Master Yi that did a very similar thing of one-shotting people constantly with his Q. Should be able to go for the end here. Should be fine. Let's use that Q to reset tower aggro here and we had level 16 as well. That is the big big power spike on Yi. Are they fighting? Okay, they want it. Nice. Alright, let's go for the end here. Alright, that was the Master Yi guide. So I hope this was helpful. As always, thank you so much for watching and see you guys in the next one.